In 2022, we purchased this former 10 bedroom care home for £180,000. And after a lengthy refurbishment, it now rents for over £45,000 a year. In this video, we're gonna show you exactly how we did it and also share a breakdown of our cash flow spreadsheet so that you can see how much money is left at the end of every month. Before we get into the video, I'm Leah. And I'm AK. And if you're new here, this is our channel where we talk about property investing, business, and working together as a couple. So today we are gonna to walk you through one of our most challenging projects, which was a care home to HMO conversion in Grimsby. So this is the 10 bed former care home. And the plan was that we would purchase it, apply for planning permission to change the use. And then once we got the green light, it would then take 16 weeks to complete the project. Sounds easy. Should have been. Well, in reality, with the delays that we encountered, it ended up taking 12 months to get to the point that it was ready to be rented out. Yes, there were so many roadblocks with this project, but let's start with the decision to purchase it and how we analyzed the deal. We drove up to Grimsby to meet with the vendor who we were introduced to by a trusted sourcing agent that we work with. Now, if you're wondering more about working with sourcing agents as a property investor or becoming one yourself, do check out the video, which I will link up in the cards, all about sourcing and sourcing agents. Now the vendor had been running care homes for a long while and was ready to sell up and retire. And we thought that this care home had huge potential to be a large HMO. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, HMO stands for Houses of Multiple Occupancy. So we spoke to some other investors locally and we did the usual due diligence on Grimsby as an area. If you're unfamiliar with how we do area research, then you can check out a video, which I will also link up in the cards, which covers how we decide whether a property is right for us, a postcode, whether we're gonna invest there, how we analyze a deal before buying it, basically. And if you've been following us for a while, you'll know that Leah and I bought our first investment property and renovated it in 2020, 2021, right in the middle of lockdown. And since then, we now have a portfolio including 24 HMO units. So this project was double the size of anything we had previously done. And it was a three hour drive from where we live. So quite different to our usual HMOs, which are just 15 to 20 minutes up the road. Distance was the first obstacle we had to overcome. You absolutely can invest and have projects that are not on your doorstep. Many people ask us that. But in our experience, it definitely becomes a lot easier when your investment is closer to you. Now for us, this was a six hour round trip. So we had to rely heavily on managing our build team and our project manager remotely, which definitely comes with its own challenges. Yeah, and when things got tough, I was finding it really hard not being able to just drive there in 10, 15 minutes to deal with a problem. One time springs to mind when I was on the phone to the police and we had a squatter living in the property and they were asking me if I could come down. I wasn't anywhere nearby, so I was having to rely on builders, neighbours, and there was just quite a lot of people we had to butter up next time we drove the three-hour trip up to Grimsby and just take a lot of chocolate with us. Yeah, I don't think it helped that we were actually getting married at the time as well so there was a lot of wedding prep and wedding plans going on as well so that just kind of made things a little bit more stressful but let's talk about the purchase price we ended up purchasing this 10 bed property for 180,000 pounds but the vendor wanted 260,000 and remember that this was an off-market deal so there weren't any agents in the middle that would have helped price that property for that area this 260,000 was based purely on what the owner thought that his property was worth. It was important for us to do our due diligence and to understand what a fair market value was. And we did, we did some of our own research and it was very, very hard to find sold prices of similar properties as there were no other 10 bedroom care homes nearby. Only a dentist, which had not sold recently. So there was no sold data for that. Other than that, it was just residential, semi-detached and terraced houses. As Leah said, it was super hard to find comparable properties and obviously we wanted to make an offer that wasn't way above what the actual value of the property was. This is where we took it upon ourselves to actually have an official survey and valuation done of the property. So we got the valuation
valuation done by a surveyor. And it's important to note here that this is not a free valuation that's offered from, say, a local estate agent. It's very different. One of our upfront costs was £700 for a professional survey, including a bricks and mortar valuation of the property. Also important to note that this is not a valuation on his business as an up and running care home because we were not buying the business. We were just buying the building. Bear in mind that we did not own the property at this point. So we were taking on some financial risk for a property which ultimately was not ours yet. But in our experience, it was a small price to pay to ensure that we are not buying a property for more than it's worth. Worth every penny that valuation, wasn't it? Absolutely worth every penny. And the valuation came back and it was £180,000. So that's £80,000 less than what the vendor felt it was worth. And of course, that's not the news he wanted to hear, but this was reflected in our formal offer to him where we also attached the valuation of £180,000. With a lot of these off-market deals, it's about working with the vendor directly and building a relationship. Now, this was definitely one of those times where it was super important to create a win-win situation for ourselves as the buyer but also more importantly for the seller as well so he wanted 260 and obviously it was formally valued at 180 so you'd think he'd straight away you think he said no so what did we do so what did we do we came to an agreement with the seller that we would give him more money once the property was revalued after the refurbishment yes so we worked on a tiered format where his additional funds were based on the value achieved after the refurbishment as AK said so in this case if we were to achieve a valuation of over four hundred thousand pounds for the property after we'd done all our works to it then the seller would get another seventy thousand pounds which is much closer to his initial asking price but if we were to achieve under four hundred thousand pounds then he would get an additional forty five thousand pounds he could have held out but in reality anyone else buying this property would have probably also got a survey done and they would have also seen that the true valuation was £180,000. This was us trying to work with him in order to secure a deal, create a win-win situation for both of us where he gets what he wants eventually and we get what we want which is the deal yeah and i think it's there in black and white the valuation has been done you can't argue with that so again i think he would have struggled to really sell it for much more than that now obviously we felt in our analysis that the property would have been worth a lot more because when you have the valuation done you are having a commercial valuation of the business as a whole you know mm-hmm. that hmo as an eight bedroom or a ten bedroom business that's creating and generating an income per year for sure so that's why we could confidently go into this offering him that uplift on the back end the next step was that we had this agreement drawn up legally this was not a spoken agreement between us it was all written out on um, a heads of terms which was signed by both parties we then handed those heads of terms to the solicitors and they do their magic thing where they write it all up formally and it was signed sealed and delivered so the purchase was underway and now we can talk you through the planning permission saga which was a nightmare (laughs) so we envisioned a 10 bedroom care home turned into an 11 bed hmo but we hit a big roadblock planning only granted us eight bedrooms so even less than what was already existing in the property and this was quite a big hit because this would likely mean around 1500 less in rent per month so we went back and forth for months well colin did our designer and planner negotiating with the environmental agency and they concluded that we could not have any of the planned bedrooms that we wanted on the ground floor even though bedrooms already existed there It was considered a flood risk area. And one of the planning terms was that we had to guarantee 1,000 years worth of flood proofing. Mm. You can see more on this in our video we did with Colin. That sheds more light on the problem that the council had with our plans. This did force us, didn't it, to reassess our strategy here before we'd even started building. So after working closely with the planning department and revising all of the drawings over and over, we finally got planning for an eight bed HMO conversion. However, just days after planning permission was granted, we had discovered that squatters had taken residence of the property. Now this whole saga was documented on our channel, which you can definitely watch after this video. It did turn out to be a huge learning curve. Now I know so much about how to remove squatters, their rights, and what to do if we ever get them again. It somehow even made the news in the US. This did throw a bit of a curveball, didn't it, into our initial plans because we were unable to start stripping out the property and get going with the refurb. Plus, the months we had spent waiting on the council to make their decisions were all adding up in holding costs. So we were paying gas, electricity, council tax, water, but no income was being generated from the property 
because it wasn't rented. It was just being squatted in, unfortunately. All of these costs are called holding costs and they should be factored in when doing a renovation project like this. And the approximate holding costs on this property in the 12 months of owning it were around 5,000 pounds. Now, as Leah said, this includes energy used by the squatter, which we were unfortunately not able to get back from the insurance. Now, during the refurbishment phase, we had to raise the floor levels downstairs. You might have seen that by well over a meter. So we actually ended up losing out on the beautiful high ceilings that were in the building. We also had to ditch all of the bedrooms on the ground floor, as mentioned earlier, due to the flood risk analysis. So the only room we could keep on the downstairs was the one next to the kitchen, which was created on top of the newly raised floor. Everything to the back of the property was not allowed to be used as habitable space. It could only be used as, say, a laundry or storage. It just couldn't be space that tenants were living in. Reducing the number of bedrooms and adapting to the flood risk regulations impacted our projected income, as we mentioned, but this was a lesson in what property investing is like and plans don't always unfold as expected. It's a painful truth, really, it isn't is it? It is the painful truth. But we can now look at the numbers and the big question would be, did the deal still cash flow as an eight bed rather than an 11 bed? Because at this point, we now own the property, we've purchased it, we've put the cash in, we've raised the money through private investment to buy it to refurbishment. So we have to make this work. It's actually too late to now back out. Unfortunately, the deal does still work as an eight bed. And actually what we're gonna do is show you here on the cash flow spreadsheet what the deal now looks like. Just to note as well with that, when we actually originally looked at it, because this is an HMO, we analyzed this for potential void periods for the rooms as well. So we actually did look at it from an eight bed and it still was cash flowing at the time. So we kind of had a small understanding as to you know whether this was still gonna work, but let's walk through the numbers and I'll show you exactly where it is. So you can see here that we purchased the property for £180,000. Now we purchased this in cash using our investors' money and so there is no mortgage or interest rates or anything to pay on this left-hand side of the calculator there. Now you'll notice the red box here includes all the works and the costs associated with this project. Now the costs of the refurbishment actually came to about £125,000. Now the reason this is £168,000 is because I'm including the tiered structure that Leah spoke about earlier where we gave the seller back some additional funds in that £45,000. So on the back end, once we'd completed this project, we actually got a valuation of £395,000 thousand pounds for that property and that business. So what does that look like then? We took a 75% loan to value mortgage out at 6.19%. So the monthly mortgage there comes in at 1,528 pounds. Now the interesting thing with this project is that unlike our other HMOs where we pay the bills and we pay the monthly operating expenses, we actually looked to work with the local council on this one that were in need for housing and in this case, it's actually gonna be housing asylum seekers here in the UK. Now, working with the council, it's classed as a social housing strategy, and often they offer you rent for the room that is much lower than what you'd get in the private sector. However, all the bills and all the maintenance and all of that stuff is covered. So you'll notice here the rent of £3,800 a month, but there isn't any monthly operating expenses. So you'll see here on the sheet that it's actually at 0%. Now, this makes a huge difference because on a property like this, the bills would be very expensive. We're working with a managing agent. As we said, it's three hours away. So we wanna make sure that this property is managed correctly. So there is a 12% management fee in there, but all in all, you'll see a cash flow there of 1,815 pounds. And this is with an eight bed. We were really hoping for that 11, but it's still making very good cash flow. Now the return on investment here is 42%, which is still very decent. And this property will pay for itself within 2.37 years, which is fantastic. And this was a mortgage taken out at the end of this year in 2023. So, you know, people, a lot of people say to us, does property still work? Absolutely, it still works. You've got to find the right deals and you've got to know what you're doing. And just to note the yearly cash flow as well is coming in at £21,790.13 pence per year, which is a pretty impressive yearly cash flow for a hands-off property that is now on a long lease with the council. 
I hope what AK said was clear about the fact that we will not be paying bills on this property like we do with our other HMOs where we're in charge of the internet, the gas, the electricity, the council, council tax. tax. We are taking a reduced rent in exchange for the tenant, which is the local council, looking after all of the bills. Yeah. And actually, what's interesting is when you include all the bills and you increase the rent, it actually works out to be a better return on investment doing it this way more often than not, wow. just with the way things are going. So yeah, super, super cool deal. We're really happy to have been able to do it. Really, really pleased with it. That is our project journey from start to finish, from purchase to squatters, to planning permission saga, to renting it out now. <laughs> that, that's the whole thing. Now, a lot of people that we talk to love the idea of property, but they want to be completely hands off. So they don't want to deal with all the issues that we've just explained there. And that's completely understandable. We're actually in a position to be taking on new partners to work with. And if this is something that may interest you, please click on the work with us link in the description box below. We do hope that this deal has inspired you and that you might have picked up a few gems or takeaways along the way. And don't forget, if you would like to start or elevate your existing property investing journey, then you can click on the link in our description propertycouple.co.uk, our brand new shiny website, where there will soon be lots of free resources, downloadable PDFs to help you start or elevate where you are at in your property journey, sharing our best tips and advice about investing. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And we will see you in the next one. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.